It takes no more research than a trip to almost any public library or college library to show the incredibly lopsided coverage of slavery in the United States or in the Western Hemisphere as compared to the meager writings on the even larger number of Africans enslaved in the Islamic countries of the Middle East and North Africa, not to mention the vast numbers of Europeans also enslaved in centuries past in the Islamic world and within Europe itself. At least a million Europeans were enslaved by North African pirates alone from 1500 to 1800. And some European slaves were still being sold on the auction block in Egypt, years after the Emancipation Proclamation freed blacks in the United States. Indeed, an Anglo-Egyptian treaty of August 4, 1877, prohibited the continued sale of white slaves after August 3, 1885, as well as prohibiting the import and export of Sudanese and Abyssinian slaves. One sign of the difference between the history of slavery in Western and non-Western societies is the very different language used to describe the very different processes by which slavery was ended in these societies. For the European offshoot societies of the Western Hemisphere, the term was the abolition of slavery, while for Africa and the Middle East, the term was the decline of slavery a much more uneven and protracted process in which local peoples continued the practice whenever and wherever they could escape the scrutiny or the power of European imperial authorities. In Asia as well, slavery continued to exist in backwaters and hinterlands on into the early 20th century. Writing in the last decade of the 20th century, a scholar observed, Slavery in Southeast Asia is not a remote historical phenomenon. Laws certainly have prohibited private ownership of persons for a century or more. Yet in more hills and islands of the region, one still encounters people who admit to being slaves or the children of slaves. Even independent non-Western nations were pressured to end slavery, both directly and by a desire not to be embarrassed in the eyes of the world, meaning during the 19th century, mostly the powerful European world, in short, where European and European offshoot societies held direct and effective power in the 19th century, slavery was simply abolished. But where the Western world's power and influence were mediated, reduced, or otherwise operated only indirectly, their non-Western peoples were able to fight a long war of attrition and evasion in defense of slavery, a war which they had, however, largely lost by the middle of the 20th century but which they had not yet wholly lost even at the beginning of the third millennium, when vestiges of slavery remained in parts of Africa. Despite all this, those with an instrumental view of history have managed to turn things upside down and present slavery as an evil of our society, or of the white race, or of Western civilization. One could as well do the same with murder or cancer, simply by ignoring these evils in other societies and incessantly denouncing their presence in the West. Yet what was peculiar about the West was not that it participated in the worldwide evil of slavery, but that it later abolished that evil, not only in Western societies, but also in other societies subject to Western control or influence. This was possible only because the anti-slavery movement coincided with an era in which Western power and hegemony were at their zenith, so that it was essentially European imperialism which ended slavery. This idea might seem shocking, not because it does not fit the facts, but because it does not fit the prevailing vision of our time.